Welcome to evening prayer service here at Beautiful Savior. As we continue going through the book of Romans, praying through God's word, and looking at what he says. This evening we are in Romans chapter 3 as we continue on with this series. Let us begin our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. To sing praise to your name, O Most High. To proclaim your love in the morning. Your truth at the close of the day. Let us join together at this time with our song for the evening.
Romans chapter 3. What advantage, then, is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? Much in every way. First of all, the Jew have been instructed with the very words of God. What if some were unfaithful? Will their unfaithfulness nullify God's faithfulness? Not at all. Let God be true, and every human be a liar, as it is written, so that you may be proved right when you speak and prevail when you judge. But if our unrighteousness brings out God's righteousness more clearly, what shall we say? That God is unjust in bringing his wrath on us? I am using a human argument. Certainly not. If that were so, how could God judge the world? Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Why not say, as some slanderously claim, that we say, let us do evil that good may result? Their condemnation is just. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their, th their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. Because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because of the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, of the Gentiles too, since there is only one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through the same faith. Do we then nullify the law by this faith? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law.
we confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
As we enter into our time of prayer, praying through our reading from Romans chapter 3, there will also be a time of silence where we get to lift up our petitions to a God who does hear and cares about our needs. Let us join together in prayer. Our Father, who Who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that despite the fact that we were dead in our sins, dead in our trespasses, and separated from you, that you gave us hope. Hope not just for us, but for the whole world when you sent your son to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins and to break the power of chain that held us. That death no longer has power over us, and instead we now have life. Life that is given through faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the one who is the author and perfecter of our faith. We thank you, Lord, for your work of salvation, planned from the very beginning before you laid the foundations of the world. We thank you, Lord, for all of the people that you have placed in your narrative of salvation, the people that you have chosen that would continue to bring about a savior to the world. We thank you, Lord, for those who come to faith in Jesus' name. We thank you for those who put their trust in him. And we pray, Lord, that more would come to know of the one who has paid the price for all. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus into the world to be the sacrifice for sin. We thank you, Lord, that we know that he is our redeemer, a redeemer that has done the work that can never be broken, that there is nothing that can take away what Jesus has accomplished, that we now could have confidence that not even unbelief, not even what the world might tell us can change the fact that our Redeemer lives. For he is the word of truth made flesh who has paid the price once for all. And so not even unbelief can make you unfaithful. Lord, hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, We thank you for your wisdom, a wisdom that goes against our ways, that goes against the ways of evil. Help us not to fall back into our old ways. Help us not to go and heed, go back unheeding your truth, to go into unscriptural, ungodly ways of life. But instead, preserve us, Lord. Continue to give us a godly character in how we conduct ourselves. Give us deeper understanding into your word. Guide us in all truth. Help us to live lives worthy of your name and worthy of what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the truth that you have revealed to us in the book of Romans. We thank you, Lord, that you have promised that we are not condemned. We are not condemned whether we are Jew, whether we are Gentile, whether we are from a heathen nation that has come to faith, But instead, what brings us to you is your grace. What brings us to faith is what Christ has done, not what nation we were born into. Help us, Lord, to have eyes that see this rather than the divisions we see around the world. For we are all under sin apart from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, help us and remove our pride, our pride that thinks that we are better thinks that there is divisions among us when all are unrighteous. No one has done good. No, not one. That we are all just based off of what you have done for us. A free gift of salvation. The simple truth that it is through grace alone so that no one can boast. Help us, Lord, to show you all honor and glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, We thank you that it is not based off our works, but it's based off of the holy and righteous works of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for those who continue to lead us and guide us, for those who, as much as we might not like it in the moment, show us when we are wrong. Help us, Lord, to learn. 
Help us to digest your word. Help us, Lord, to realize when we are erring. Help us to realize that when we sin, there is forgiveness in you. Help us, Lord, when we realize that you are the way, the truth, and the life, that that means that you are the life for all eternity and that we can trust that. In Jesus' name, amen. And Heavenly Father, help us trust that there is knowledge in you. There is wisdom in you. Help us look to that dwelling of Christ in us, given to us in baptism. Help us trust what you have done when we were still sinners. Help us clothe ourselves in his righteousness, not in our righteousness. Help us trust in him rather than what we do. Help us have a knowledge that is based off of your words. Help us, Lord, look to you in times of need. And help us look throughout your word, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, seeing this truth that has been made known, that truth of when your son took on flesh and dwelt among us, so that we would now know of that forgiveness that has been won for us in his precious name. Hear us now, Lord, as we lift up to you our needs and our petitions. Hear us as we lift up those needs that we have for the days ahead, and as we give you thanks for what you have done in this time of silence. as we are reminded that we are justified by faith, not by deeds. Hear us, Lord, as we close out our day and our time of prayer with Luther's evening prayer, putting our trust in you. I thank you, my my heavenly Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, your dear dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. day. And And I I pray pray that that you would would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rest this night in God's peace. Rest knowing that through Jesus you are forgiven and there is life in his name. Rest knowing that you have a God who has justified you. In his name, amen.